Hello there. Today we're going to be talking about void pointers in the C programming language. First, we're going to go over exactly what they are and how they work. And then we're going to dive deeper and see an example of how they can be more useful. Hello there. We're going to go through a couple of examples just to show you what void pointers are. First one is very simple. I'm going to define an integer called a. Then we're going to set up a void pointer and we're going to set it to the address of a. So we don't know anything about how pointers work. I'll define another one here and I will call it i pointer and I'll also set it to the address of a. So this one is an integer pointer. And if we try and print the integer pointer, it should work quite well. So let's just quickly go over this. All right. Uh, yep. Okay. So this worked fine because we know on this machine an integer is, or the compiler knows, an integer is 32 bits. And therefore, an integer pointer knows that the information stored inside of a is also 32 bits which is why we can use the value just fine the difference between a normal pointer and a void pointer is that the compiler does not know what size a void pointer is but if we try and print this we're going to get an error can't dereference a void pointer and there's good reason for that for instance if we had a character here and we're going to define it as just the character B, we're going to name it B, and then we change this pointer to the address of B. Okay. And then we cast this to an integer pointer. Right. This is going to print, not, it's not going to print B. It's going to print something kind of not random, but something totally different because. If you think about how memory works, um, let's just say we've got the character B here, and then we have other stuff that's been happening on the computer. It's going to be in the memory, so I'm just going to put like question marks. We've got this kind of memory. So when we refer to this pointer as an integer pointer, it's actually grabbing all four bytes in this case and printing that, which is 5954 and this will just be different depending on what is in these bits of memory or bytes of memory rather the compiler needs to know the size of the memory that you're working with so that's that's really the main thing to do with void pointers you can do a lot with them as long as you just tell the compiler what the size is and then cast it appropriately so let's have a look at an example of what that might look like okay i've cleared that stuff away and now i'm going to show you an example of a generic function using void pointers and this is where the power really comes in I'm just going to call this function print byte and it's going to take in data which is a void pointer and then it's going to take in an integer which is the byte that we actually want to print within that data so I'm just going to type this out first and then I will explain it okay I out the function here so let's go over it bit by bit no pun intended the uh, byte variable here is just getting the particular byte that we want to print and the way that we do that is we cast the data to a character pointer and a character pointer is one byte so we know that we want to move from the initial value n bytes using pointer arithmetic which you can do with a character pointer you can move an arbitrary number of bytes across and do something with that data, which is nice. And then this print function is just printing a number and then printing an unsigned integer and then a hexadecimal number or representation. And then we're going to print the character representation. Let's have a look at what that looks like. I'm going to make two hexadecimal numbers here so we can see uh, that it worked. I'm going to print this one. If we print, take the address of A, we want to print the byte at position 1, which is actually the BE, because the bytes start at the right and move to the left. Let's just see if that works. We should get BE. There we go. That's cool. 
So you can see the number is what is that like 42 million uh, 42 billion 429 it doesn't matter it's like it's a lot right and if we print the other byte which in this case is ef you should see that this says beef there we go i'm going to use a long this time and a long is well it's longer than an int it can store up to 64 bits rather than 32 so I'm gonna type bad cafe just so it makes it easier for us to see if it's working and I'm gonna print it backwards again so I'm just gonna change this to 3 and then 2 and we've got beef bad cafe yeah right so that's that's working pretty well that's just a simple example of how you can make generic functions using void pointers because the alternative would be well, one alternative you might come up with if you're a beginner or if you just don't know about void pointers is you might put in something like print byte int and then you take an int pointer or even just an integer um, as your data and then you take the n and then you do the same thing except it only takes integers and then you do you do this and then you make a print byte um, long you know, and you have another function and another function with different types. Whereas with the void pointer, you can use one function for any type as long as you pass in uh, specifically where in the memory you want to be using things. So in the next video, we're going to be getting into a more practical application of this rather than just printing out bytes. That'll be next Wednesday. We're going to build the dictionary and it's going to use uh, this and it's also going to be using some memory copying and stuff like that. So if you don't know about that, make sure to subscribe so you get the video next week. And we'll have a look at it then. Catch you.